You may go. All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all enjoying the Super Bowl. My name is James Walter Matheson III. You can call me Jimbo. And I'm here to thank you all for supporting Jimbo's LLC over the years. We started from humble beginnings with uh, just some beer and music in the back of a Walmart parking lot. We extended to a large commercial brewery, producing, please, uh, then a barbecue and burger bar, and into a more lucrative market segment with restaurants, nightclubs, and James Walter branded whiskey. I work to expand the reach of my company's marketing efforts through naming rights at a state-of-the-art sports arena here in Houston, Texas, and sponsorship of rodeos, NASCAR, monster truck rallies, the NFL, a country music festival, and UFC bouts. Rather than exporting jobs like so many other large corporations, I chose to keep my workforce here at home and export the American life out to the rest of the world. Ultimately, my goal is to provide you, the American consumer, with food, beverages, and entertainment to meet all your everyday needs. I believe that each and every American deserves to have as much as they want, more than they need, all the time. So during the Super Bowl this year, during halftime after the game, come down to any one of my fine establishments and enjoy a cold one on me, because remember, sometimes satisfaction just isn't enough. Whoa, satisfaction just isn't enough? Hold on there a second, big Jimbo, what are you trying to say? You like a psychologist or something? Nah, he's coming later. I'm just a theologist. But that's beside the point. Your brand is ridiculous. My brand is the American brand. I don't know, Jimbo. It seems like you're promoting overconsumption. You're the epitome of what America faces today as one of their problems. But I sell beer and lots of other things people need, too. Now, now, Jimbo, let's just take a closer look at your life. Let's start here at your hated community of mansions. Your monster kitchen that could house utensils in its own drawer, and then those 50 pairs of the same shoes that you own, where will you hold those? And let's talk about your car, your grand Bayon Super Sport Quad Turbo that cost a million and a half dollars and gets 10 miles to the gallon. That's not very excessive, though, until you get to the garage that's heated and the house is heat. But make sure to multiply that all by seven, because you own seven homes. You, Jimbo, are the perfect depiction of one of America's current problems. Plain and simple, Americans overindulge, and we've crossed the boundary between necessity and luxury. I still don't think I'm quite following you here. All right, Jimbo, well, let's check out the more average life of an American. We find ourselves set in suburbia, with the monotonous rows of homes that have groomed sidewalks, and then we get to their paved driveways that house their three cars that each average American family owns. Head inside and you'll find that 66% of Americans own three or more televisions in their home, not to mention the uh, small army of remotes that is needed by each of those. But could the universal remote be the holy grail? For the small purchase of $300, it could be yours. And yet, to add to this technological revolution, we have desktop computers, laptops, iPads, smartphones, and once they're out of date, we just keep adding. We update as each new upgraded cooler and more efficient <coughs> version surfaces year by year. Americans replace their cell phones more than any other country in the world at a rate of less than every two years. And in 2006, um, 304 million electronics were disposed of from American households. Two thirds of those electronics still work. We consume a lot of food too. You got your fast food restaurants, your ice cream parlors, your Starbucks. Oh, and obesity is not a genetic problem, but a consequence of our lifestyle. Our children, among others, have fallen victim to this epidemic. And yes, we know that fast food isn't healthy, but it's how much we eat that is the problem. A supersized french fry comes in at a whopping 600 calories, not to mention that 42 ounce supersized soda that's 400 calories and has 113 grams of sugar, we won't even talk about the bacon cheeseburger that comes along with this meal. And once you've hit rock bottom of that food coma, just pop on over to Starbucks to get that trinket chocolate cookie crumble frappuccino that's 800 calories. Um, Americans spend more money on fast food than uh, higher education, and about 5.6% of the American income goes towards fast food. So, this 
already we had already exceeded the normal capacity of our stomachs and our pockets, so why do we still get it? If our stomach can't hold it, why would we keep going? Because the fast food industry promotes these increasing portions to make them more attractive. It is so easy to upgrade to the next size because it's a good deal. But is it worth it at the cost of our bodies, our pockets, and our planet? What do you think, Jimbo? Uh. Now, folks, I'd like to introduce the famed celebrity psychiatrist, addiction specialist, and newly appointed geologist, Dr. Matt Tanner, author of his New York Times bestselling book, The Addiction in All of Us. Thank you, thank you. Now, you all might remember me from my hit daytime talk show, Dr. Matt and Friends. <laughs> <laughs> you might be asking yourself why. Why do Americans go to such great lengths, even at the risk of their own health, for the sake of consumption? I'd like to propose that the reason lies in a disease. Disease is called compulsive buying disorder. <laughs> this is a well-established condition, and psychologists estimate that about 6% of Americans are afflicted with compulsive buying disorder. But looking at the evidence, it's my diagnosis this that this number is much higher, and includes the majority of Americans. Now, one psychological study found that, without a strong sense of identity, pressures from the spread of materialist values in consumer culture over the recent decades can drive the vulnerable into compulsive shopping. Doesn't this sound like modern America, with our lack of national purpose and identity driving us to find solace in shiny new gadgets? Americans are addicted and obsessed with shopping and consumption. Just take a look at a recent case study, Black Friday. Consumers jump over each other and violently compete for a chance to buy socks for 50% off. In 2011, 34% of shoppers said they planned on to shop on Black Friday, and 39% on Cyber Monday. This kind of compulsive behavior the classic symptom of psychological neurosis. One of the key symptoms of compulsive buying disorder is a distorted sense of entitlement. This entitlement is so warped that even though 12% of the world's population lives in North America and Western Europe, it accounts for 60% of private consumption spending. Yet a third of humanity who lives in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa account for only 3.2%. This is not only a ridiculous appropriation of the Earth's resources, it is not at all sustainable in the long run. Natural resources are already running out, and the UN has even projected that global, global resource consumption will triple by 2050. Even more dire is our situation with water. In the last century, water use has increased at more than double the rate of population growth. And considering that our access to fresh water in the world is limited to 0.75% of the world's water, this is a serious problem. It's projected that in just 13 years, 1.8 billion people will be living in regions with absolute water scarcity. Likewise, world energy consumption has exploded exponentially in the last century, with the vast bulk of our energy still coming from non-renewable sources. It's not only energy sources that are being depleted, though. All of our natural resources that go into the products we love to buy and replace every two years, like clockwork, are being driven towards depletion. Using today's global consumption rate, which is very conservative measure, considering that consumption is expected to triple by 2050, we'll be running out of India for LCD screens in 13 years lead for batteries in 42 years, gold for electronics in 45 years, and countless other valuable resources we extract out of the Earth's crust will be depleted or in a very short supply in the near future. Indeed, worldwide demand for rare earth metals that go into all of our disposable electronics is estimated to be even higher than our production rates. You might think hybrid and electric cars are the epitome of green and will save the planet with their lithium-ion batteries, but in reality, you may only have enough accessible lithium in the Earth's crust to power 200 million electric vehicles, not nearly enough to replace the 900 million motor vehicles on the road today. And if lithium-ion batteries won't save us, then oil doesn't even stand a chance. By 2020, American oil consumption is expected to exceed refinery production. And then Americans will really feel the crunch, since oil-powered transportation is responsible for bringing all the products that we love to our local malls. A covered wagon might see a resurgence as a cheaper alternative driving for those trips to the grocery store or weekend getaways to the coast. And your Bugatti Jimbo will only go as fast as you can push it. Now, our rapidly increasing consumption habits have real consequences on the quality of our life in the very near future, in our own lifetimes. Imagine 40 years not being able to purchase the products that we rely on so heavily because it's simply impossible to make them with the scarce resources we have left. This is obviously a problem, but we can fix it. I'd like to introduce you the woman whose plan will decrease American consumption and save our country's future and way of life, our political strategist and hotshot lobbyist. Hi. Oh, sorry. I was checking up on the polls. 
So you're looking for a solution to this problem with overconsumption. I have one word for you, accountability. In order to make big changes, we need to implement a plan that will hold each and every person accountable for their actions. This means we need a solution that is going to be personal, publicized, and nationwide. We need to implement a system that is scalable, automated, visible, eco-centered, eco -centered, mandatory, objective, realistic, and educational. So this means it needs to be scalable. So relating your consumption habits to the consequences of your actions. It needs to be automated because, let's get real here, uh, there's a lot of turnip heads out there and it needs to be easy for them to understand. It needs to be highly visible so that everyone can see how much crap you and I are consuming on a daily basis. And along those lines, it needs to be ego-centered, putting on the line the reputations of those who are exceeding the average rates of consumption. Next, it needs to be man mandatory, something that's not optional, so nobody can get out of it. It needs to be objective, meaning there are no forms of discrimination or personal biases involved. And it needs to be realistic, a program that won't require a lot of new infrastructure. And finally, last but not least, it needs to be educational. It needs to integrate consumption information in a way that people can understand and be concerned about. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you the consumer card. One example of an accountability system that meets all of these above requirements. The consumer card will feature your name and your consumer ID number. Like your social security number, this, this number will be unique to you. Each time you go to make a purchase, you'll scan your consumer card, and it will update your information on the consumption database, as well as give you feedback on your purchases. So, the next time your grandmother goes to Walmart to buy wine, cookies, and cigarettes, checker will say, thank you for shopping at Walmart, Mrs. Smith. You saved $36.97, killed three trees, displaced two meter, square meters of endangered species habitat, and dumped three gallons of poison into the water supply. Will you be needing help out today? Unlike a credit card, your consumer ID is required for all purchases, including utility accounts, magazine subscriptions, gym memberships, and more. When you receive a bill in the mail, which you shouldn't because it wastes paper, or online, your consumption and the consequences of that consumption will be listed in addition to the usual cost information. Your consumer score, your level of personal consumption, measured by an index relative to a baseline, will be made public, accessible on the database online. It will list your name, your city of residence, and your score, but it will not list any of the products that you've consumed as a means of protecting your personal privacy. Your consumer score will be linked to all of your social media accounts. It will appear on your Facebook page, your Twitter profile, your LinkedIn account, and your Instagram. Social media platforms are highly visible, and as you can see, they have a wide reach with reaching 845 million users and with 100 billion connections. That's pretty, pretty widespread there. Uh, so the next time Mark Zuckerberg goes to get on his Facebook account, he'll receive a new notification that reads a little something like this. Hi Mark, today's consumption killed 10 trees. That makes 159 this month. Please check your messages for an itemized report on this month's consumption. This plan may seem extreme, but the level of awareness and personal accountability is only one is the only way that we can decrease our obscene and ever increasing consumption rates. Please join us and support our platform for the consumer card by voting yes for Measure Zero during this upcoming election. Less zero for zero tolerance and zero time to waste. Less consumption now means that our children and future generations will still have the resources necessary to live and thrive on planet Earth. Wow. Oh, it's convenient that you made that because you guys have convinced me. Uh, I'm going to offer my full support to your bill to get it passed. I'll make sure my super PAC gives you crazy kids all the money you need to push it past all those Washington insiders and fat cats. I'm James Walter Matheson III, and I approve this message.